What up everybody, this is Chef, New Zealand Murder History Podcast. How's everyone doing out there? Alrighty. Well, I've got a pretty interesting case for you today. When I say pretty interesting, I mean this is, um, well. Anyway, the case I'm about to discuss is unsolved. Some people do believe that Tim Parlane killed Matt Hall and then died in a suspected suicide, but none of this is proven and we don't know that for sure. This is the theory that I'll be discussing in this case, though. It's worth saying that the the Parlane family, including Tim's dad, believed he didn't do it. What I will say, though, is he definitely had a motive. And that was his pride was hurt. Still, he may not have killed Matt Hall. Who knows? I mean, I wasn't there. Although I am from Javel, I never met Matt Hall or Tim Parlane. This podcast is from various news websites. New Zealand Murder History Podcast will discuss adults only content. Murder, also suicide. Is really heavy. Kids, don't listen, please. Click off. Anyway, my name is Chef, and today I'm going to talk about a high-profile Johnsonville murder. This one's bizarre. I'm talking about the rivalry of two of Wellington City. It's the capital city of New Zealand. It's best heavy metal bands. Backyard Burial and Bullet Belt. Tim Parlane was the lead singer of Bullet Belt. Matthew Hall was the lead singer of Backyard Burial. Tim Parlane from Bullet Belt would end up surprise attacking Matt Hall in his Johnsonville home in his bedsit in Broderick Road. But why did it all go down like that? Well, here in New Zealand we have what you call a big fish in a small pond. The band war between these two heavy metal bands, well it was like the Tupac versus Biggie war of the early 90s, if you guys remember that. Only way more small time, but no less deadly. First off, I would like to talk about Johnsonville, Wellington. Let's just set the scene a minute, all right? Now, Johnsonville, it's a, it's a little sketchy, but it's not that sketchy, you know? I mean, the centre of Wellington is considered a safe place. I mean, not always is it a safe place, but it's typically considered to be safe as quite a high police presence, etc. But it's when you go just north of Wellington that things start to get hard up and nasty. Now, I mean, the much higher crime areas include <coughs> the high crime areas include all of Porirua from Cannons Creek to Kenapuru to Tatahi Bay, all that's high crime. The Hutt Valley and Kapiti Coast, yep. Parts of the hut, some parts of the hut aren't so bad, but you know what I mean. These places have more of a reputation than Wellington City. But anyway. Johnsonville is halfway in between town and more sketchy North Wellington places. Johnsonville is a suburb. It has two supermarkets, about five gas stations, a mall with a food court, and a few schools. Uh, crimes that typically go down in Johnsonville, some drug crime, uh, assaults. I mean, one time when I was growing up, I remember this kid, Pranit, he got stabbed in the stomach, um, he was fine, I, he, um, I don't know, somebody stabbed him, so, I mean, you know, it's a, some stuff is, is, is pretty bad, but it's not really a super heavy place, you know, it's not very gang related, although there are members from some gangs there that do live there, they, they don't really beef with each other in Johnsonville, and no one gang tries to claim Javel as their territory, I mean, perhaps sometimes they do, I suppose, but it's not really known for that kind of thing either. It's, um, well, anyway, let's get back to the story. 
So some of the some of the articles I used for this one, we've got the 25th of the 1st, 2013. Murder suspect prompts, oh, murder suspect's death prompts review, and that's on stuff.co.nz. Most of the information in this podcast, though, is from an article called Man Tells Friend of Death Metal Killing, Then Dies Under a Train. And that's originally printed on the 16th of the 4th, 2011, in the Dominion Post. But you can find it on pressreader.com. Anyway, Tim Parlang gets labelled a narc for reasons unknown. Not sure from the info available who he may or may not have narked on. No idea. But, Backyard Burial were to play a set at a club called Valve that would prove to start some deadly feud. The underground death metal scene had no idea how real this was going to be. When they dedicated a song to the singer of Bullet Belt, the whole crowd drew their attention to the stage. And backyard Burial played, Death to the Knock! <coughs> now obviously the song Death to the Knock was written to humiliate Tim Parlane. And it's safe to say he didn't like it. Now the venue that this gig was at was called Valve. I think the name's changed to Hole in the Wall, but it's still there, you know. Because the front door has some bricks missing on purpose to make it look like a hole in the wall. Yeah, they changed the name Hole in the Wall. But anyway, it's a very small function venue. Probably fits like mm, 200 people. It's definitely a cool club, and in the early 2000s, heaps of Wellington metal bands played there. They probably still do. And they would also throw some drum and bass parties, stuff like that. Just whoever really wanted to book the venue, you know what I mean? Anyway, this song may have been what tipped, Parlane, tip, tipped Tim Parlane over the edge of darkness. The fact that the death to the narc got dedicated to him in probably Wellington's most iconic heavy metal club. So Tim's thinking about this. 24-7 rumination to a pathological outcome. It was the 15th of February, 2011, and Matt Hall gets found stabbed to death in his bedsit in Broderick Road, Johnsonville. The Javel cops said they hadn't seen a bloody crime scene like that in years. Cops believe he was killed the day before on the 14th. Basically, this next bit comes from a lady who briefly dated Tim Parlane. This is what she says. Tim said it was easy to get in, the door was unlocked. I thought I would have to break in or knock and wait for him to answer the door. But the door was unlocked and I just went in and found him asleep in bed. I brought two knives, which was lucky, because he fought back. He also went on to say that he wasn't going down for the crime and if the cops get onto him, he would take his own life. It looks like that's what's happened. The lady whose name is suppressed told the cops that her lover confessed to the crime. They bring Tim in, and a few hours later, he jumps in front of a train. I think it was by one of the Crofton Downs tunnels. Anyway, killed Tim, killed Tim Parlane instantly, it did, as you'd expect. So he would never stand trial. I don't think he was ever charged. Tim Parlane's dad says he didn't murder Matt Hall, so it's up to you what you think. He had the motive, but I don't know, is, did Matt Hall have other mortal enemies? Perhaps. Yeah, I actually originally thought it was the Kandala Tunnel um, when this case all went down, but says on the internet it was a tunnel close to Kaifora for a gorge. So that could be a few of them. Anyway, when you grow up in Johnsonville and the surrounding suburbs, well, you tend to walk by the train tracks, but you walk beside the train tracks, so down, down a bit, nowhere actually near the train tracks, but you walk along beside them. It's quicker than taking the streets. Probably kids don't do that anymore because 
you know, because of this case really and other train accidents, etc. But when I was a kid, we used to say you walk the tracks. But yeah, like I said, you didn't actually walk on the tracks. Anyway, sometimes a train would come and pass you and they'd beat their horn. The driver might shake their fist or something like that. But, you know, I think these days they'd probably call the cops, you know. Anyway, one time me, Stewie and Sam, well, we ran through the Kandala train tunnel. I think Bulldog might have been with us too, can't remember. It's been about 11 or something. Yeah, the Kandala train tunnel, anyway, we ran through. It was terrifying. It was really, really freaky. It was like a dead sheep in the tunnel. It stank. It was so scary. And it also takes way longer than you think, and you're running really quick. Because, um, well, because you don't want the train to come, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's genuinely quite scary, because you can't see nothing. It's so dark. Like, it doesn't have lights in the tunnel, you know? You try not to trip over on the railway sleepers. That's the slats of wood that sit under the, um... Ah, you get the picture anyway. I can only imagine Tim Parlane, racked with dread, pressed up against the side of the tunnel, listening for the Javel train. Well, that would have been bad. Says it was from Kaiforafora Gorge. It's a bit closer to Wellington City. But yeah, Javel train all the same. Very sad. Anyway, now Tim Parlane and Matt Hall are both gone, and we'll probably never know exactly how it all went down. If, in fact, Tim Parlane didn't murder Matt Hall, then whoever did isn't talking. Backyard Burial would get a new singer, and Matt Hall would go down in Wellington's metal scene as a hero. Bullet Belt would also find a new singer, even going to Japan to play in Osaka. And I tell you, for a Wellington metal band, to make it to Japan on tour, that, that's pretty highly successful. It's very good. Matt Hall's day job was a receptionist at an outpatient's rehabilitation clinic. Yeah, it's a shame, um, it's a shame he died in the way he did, because he, um, yeah, like I said, he's a good death metal singer. Work trying to rehabilitate people in the daytime is his day job. I mean, it's sad. It's a waste, you know what I mean? This major crime happened because Tim Parlane's pride was hurt. His band image demanded a hardcore frontman. So he had to prove he wasn't a narc. I mean, would a narc murder somebody? Two big fish in a Wellington city pond. Definitely a strange one. DEATH TO THE NARC! Okay, that's it. That's the good... That's the show. Have a good one, everybody.